I'm here for game five, and I lost the last game, so I'm getting my play on. Uh, great, perfect hand ever. Um, this hand's fine, so I'm gonna keep it. Oh, two lander, a solid little creature, and a couple haste guys. So All right. Stomping around, I'm at 17 life, and I'm done. Draw. I will. I'm gonna lead with this, so I can play this next turn. So if I just play a Valkyrie. I'll just flood the board slightly. Uh, I'm at 15, and got some creatures. I got a Goblin Guide trigger here. Yep, it is a Cryptic Command. <laughs> Not what I wanted. Didn't know about. All right, go ahead. So I'm at 15. All right, so play a Temple of Mystery. Jeez. And scry. Not not slow. And I do want that card, but man, can I afford to even get there? Can you afford afford to wait to my turn to bolt? That's a good question too. Yeah, I guess I can keep this on top, even though it's not a land, which is what I would like to have. And I'm just going to go ahead and bolt that thing right now. Here you go. It might be better to bolt Swiss Spear, honestly, but it's close-ish. Um, this represents five, this represents four. Three. What's him for eight do? Anything? Yeah, I guess I'll cash it in for three damage and plus on my team. So with an effect of six damage. So I take I go to twelve from that, and then it's gonna be three, six, so I go to six. Yeah, I got a trigger there. It's a Bayloth. Alright. Alright. Draw. Very easily could be dead. If he has like a Boros charm, I'm probably dead, or another Tarkus command. Or something, but I'm um, just gonna electrolyze this for two. Go. Forest charm. All right, I'm dead. Forest charm. Yep. <laughs> but one more turn, I could have gotten to this Bayloth. Then my hand was really good, probably win. But... Yeah, this matchup sucks for you. All right, so that was pretty much just a one-sided affair. <laughs> uh, it was pretty clear that Zoo is very favored in this matchup. Uh, I think that Scapeshift can be built to fight decks like this, but this list was not set up that way. Uh, one, I didn't have like Fire Spout or anything like that, which would have been really, really, really good against you. Yeah, Anger the Gods, something. Yeah. Power Clouds don't really do it, and you didn't even really draw them. Yeah, I, th I think Fire Spout's just the best answer because this deck doesn't want to put two red sources into play early. Uh, so I think Fire Spout just, it, I mean, you lose some value against things like Kitchen Finks or whatever, but. Um, those decks aren't super popular, so I think something like Fire Spot would be great uh, against in this matchup. Uh, another thing about this deck is like there there are a lot of things about this deck that I, I thought were not great. One was there's ten shock lands. Yeah, that sucks. But you have to have the mountain count high for escape shifts. Yeah, you have to have the mountain count high, but there's no reason to have like three breeding pools in your deck. You really yeah, only need you need one, um, and. I think that this deck is better suited. Also, this deck felt like it was a little light on blue sources. And I think that uh, really like Flooded Grove or Cascade Bluffs, mm. uh, like I, I normally hate those lands, but I think they're really necessary in this deck. There were a lot of times where I had Cryptic Command in hand and I just couldn't cast it because I drew like a Forest and a Balakut. Yeah. Uh, my deck was great, though. Patrick Sullivan sure knows how to beat down. <laughs> He's been working on deck, plays on Magic Online all the time. You may have seen the deck in the hands of Cedric Phillips in the, the Modern Super League. Um, he was... Pretty much mentored by Patrick Sullivan. Uh, yeah, I think this list is great. It's good for fast games, uh, good for multi queuing, good for you know getting your water and bathroom breaks in between rounds. <laughs> and this may, I don't know, this might have been like the fastest versus series done. It's like under an hour or something. But yeah. That's, that's why I like them, quick and painless. Yeah, I think that this deck actually seems really good. Um, actually, I, I was like so impressed with it that I would consider playing it myself, even though it's not my style of deck. It just. I mean, you basically killed me on turn three, like, multiple games in a row. Yes, like just super e consistent. Even through, like, a bolt, like, I just, you know, I don't know, I just died so fast. 
It is, and it is kind of a combo deck too. I mean, you want two creatures, two lands, and probably two spells within your your six cards. So you can mulligan and like fix it with your seventh card that you see. And that's, that's all the deck is: is creatures and lands and spells. I mean, I guess not every deck is really. Yeah. But uh, uh, more importantly, you usually want like a fat ground creature, like a wild and a cattle, and then backed up with like a haste creature, like a goblin god. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Scapeshift seems like it's pretty poorly positioned against this. Um, I think Scapeshift is a deck that's actually good against a lot of like the com more commonly played decks. It just seems very poor against like super aggressive strategy like this. And I think you can build it differently. Um, I also think like four Snapcasters seems a bit high. Like they're good with anticipates and things like that, but the issue is that you know you don't always have time to get there, mm -hmm. um, and and you don't always have time. Like if you're relying on Snapcaster only for four two mana plays, like anticipate, peer through dumps or remand, you essentially have like cryptic commands and Snapcasters. You have so many four mana plays in your deck. It's just a little glutted in that slot. Yeah, it does seem very clunky. Yeah, I think you'd be better better served by like you know, fire spouts or things like that uh, to try to buy you the time to get to escape ships. Yeah, definitely. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's all for us. Make sure you check out the Modern Open this weekend. It's in Dallas. Uh, Cedric Phillips and Jerry Thompson, actually, are going to be doing commentary. So a little different than the normal crew, and uh, Jerry usually has great insight. So make sure you tune in uh, to see those two guys talk about 15 rounds of Modern. Uh, and another modern top eight as well. Yeah, I'm looking uh, forward to it. To uh, actually just watching the coverage this time around because I like <laughs> I like Jerry's commentary. Yeah, and Jerry, Jerry and Cedric go way back, and their banter is pretty pretty hilarious a lot of times. Yeah, both of them are great. So make sure you check that out. Um, I know that I personally won't be there. Tom won't be there either. But uh, still, if you're in the area, make sure you swing by and play some modern. It's a interesting format. There's a lot of ups and downs to it, but uh, overall, it seems to be a really popular format. So. Um, yep, make sure you check that out. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week. All right, until next time.